Psalms chapter 78 verse 35. History again is the key to God. History in America has been changed to make some people happy. And they remember that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. And remember is a key word when it comes to history. You are to remember what God has done for you. Now we're going to go through the book of Exodus. Nevertheless, they did flatter him, God, with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongues. There are people that do that today. <coughs> 2014, you know, they, they try to think that God's so happy with them by what they say and do. And God, God knows the heart. Man may not. You see that all of these fancy pantsy preachers that get up there with eloquency and roll the Lord and all that kind of garbage and mess. And with their tongues, you know, they speak other languages and junk like that. For their heart was not right with him, God. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You don't believe with your heart, you're not saved and God's not pleased with you. That's plain and simple. I don't care who you are. It has to be a heart condition, not head. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. In other words, they didn't do what God told them to do. They, they steadfast. They, they nitpick what they wanted to do. But he, being full of compassion, as God always is, is long-suffering, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away, thanks to Moses praying for him, and did not stir up all his wrath. Had he stirred up all his wrath, Israel would have been just gone. There would be no Jews today. And that's how angry God got. For he, God, remembered that they were but flesh. And that's what we are. This verse right here could be used to say that there is no reincarnation. A wind that passes away and cometh not again. You don't come back. You don't come back as grandpa. You don't come back as a, a cockroach. You don't come back as anything. Once the wind, the spirit that God breathed in the man, he became a living soul, is out of you, you are dead. Plain and simple. No reincarnation out of the King James Bible. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness? Often. A lot. Much. Every time they turn around and grieve him in the desert. You know, you can grieve God, you can grieve the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Jesus moaned, groaned in the Spirit. Do you ever make God grieve? Do you ever make the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ grieve by your actions? Yea, they turned back. And tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. God couldn't bless them all the way. Why don't I get all these blessings I should as a Christian? Because you grieve God. Because you sin. Only way we're going to get the full blessings of God is when He takes these bodies and converts them over to a new body and puts us into New Jerusalem into eternity. They remember not his hand. You know, first they, 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 they were thirsty. Then they were hungry. Then they were thirsty again. They didn't remember that they were, th they were thirsty before God took care of them. Then they were hungry again. They didn't remember that God took care of their food. They remember not. This is not the kind of remember you have. You're to remember what God's done. You are to count your many blessings and name them one by one. That's one of the things I mark in my Bible. I'll mark with a date or something, whatever it is. And then as I go through, and I'll, I'll see what the Lord has done. You know what I believe with some of these people that they claim that it's Alzheimer's? See, I don't believe this medical garbage. I believe you can go to a doctor and pay him anything, and he'll tell you anything for cash, check, or money order. You don't want to remember what God's done. 
You don't want to have anything to do with God. Let's put the judgment of God upon man today and his stupid illnesses. Let's get back to God in the Bible. A guy who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ in the Bible telling you that God made your body, God is our creator, telling you what the problem is in your life? You don't want to remember what God has done. You want to change it. The atheists in the, uh, the, that law group there in America, they want to get God out. They don't want to remember that God founded this nation by the pilgrims. They even changed that history. Go sit in a classroom and see what they teach you about uh, Thanksgiving Day. You'll be quite shocked to learn what they tell you about it. Nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They didn't remember Egypt. <clears throat> in a minute, we're going to get through all the things that he they don't they did not remember in Egypt. Remember the day that the Lord saved you? Remember that day when you finally felt clean, you got off your sins, and you were perfect inside of the Lord, and God adopted you and took you in? Or did you ever have such a day? Do you remember the day that God came to you and saved your soul? That's the first remembrance you're to have. It's what we call in the Bible going back to Bethel. The house of God that dwelt inside you. How he wrought his signs in Egypt. Signs are for Jews according to 1 Corinthians 1, 21 or 22. All those things that he did in Egypt that we're going to read again were signs for the Jews. The nation was built upon a sign. Moses and the rod turned into a serpent. That was a sign for the Jews. Then Moses showed Pharaoh. But it was to the Jews first. Moses was a Jew. And the first sign that was given to Moses was the burning bush. You shouldn't have that star on the flag. You should have a burning bush or a rod that is a serpent. For the nation of Israel. That's the proper flag emblem. And his wonders in the field of Zoan. And we saw that back in verse 12 again. And he, oh, excuse me, and had turned their rivers into blood. Alright, we read that in Exodus. The psalmist writes the history. It happened. And their floods. Not just the rivers. That's an S. Floods would be they, they would they would dam up the rivers so the water would overflow and, and water the fields. Became blood that they could not drink. Their reservoirs were blood. That's gonna happen in tribulation. Alright. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them. Oh, we learned something new here that we didn't learn in Exodus. It wasn't just one particular kind of fly. It was all kinds of flies. House flies, horse flies, and butterflies. I don't know about butterflies, but all kinds of flies. Which devoured them. And frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase of the crops unto the caterpillar, which came and ate, and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed, the, the, he is God, destroyed the vines with hail, and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to hail, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. And we read back in Exodus that hot was, was a fire. So you had live shish kebab. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. Where did you read that in Exodus? 
God allows Satan's angels to go run around this place. You know who's going to be running around in the tribulation period? Satan himself. I'm wondering if any of his angels are going to help him. We didn't learn that next. It's scripture with scripture. You learn. Study to show thyself approved unto God. He made a way to he made a way to his anger. God was angry with Egypt for all those worshiping in God and not letting his people go. He said to Abraham, Them that curse you, I will curse. He spared not their soul unto death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. And smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength, in the tabernacles of Ham. Where is Ham? Ham is in Africa. He's the colored boy. Israel had no business being in Africa. They went too far south. But made his own people, the Jews, to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He brought them out. John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. He led them safely so that they feared not. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. So before they got to the Red Sea, there was no fear. Until they came to that sea, and then here comes Pharaoh's men. Uh-oh. Why are you brothers here to be killed by Pharaoh and his men? And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary. Even to this mountain. Mount Horeb. Sinai. Which his right hand had purchased he cast out the heathen also before them and divided them in inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents so he divided the Gentiles among the Jews because the Bible records there were Egyptians that were with them later on they pick up Rahab and her family in the land Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies. <clears throat> you know what? After all what God does to us, we don't, we don't honor God like we should. You know, the Bible tells us as, as born-again Christians that there are commandments for us. The Bible tells us in the New Testament for the Christian, there are certain people that we are to be around and not be around. There are certain things that we are to do and there are certain things we are not to do. Our time, our money, our all are for a reason. But we don't do what God tells us to do, even after all what he's done for us. And you go ahead and stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and you will be found fault. Your money, your time, your friendship, your family relations, and all that you have. The Bible tells you how to live. And friend, I'm telling you, this most important thing I teach and I get into, I want you to know as a born-again Christian that you will face the judgment seat of Christ and you will suffer loss if you don't do right. But turn back and dwell unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. Or, de de yeah, deceitful bow. They wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to the place of bondage. Shame. I'm trying to think of his name. Paul's companion there that went back to Thessalonica. 
demons. He went back. He turned away. And Christians can do that. And then, when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, don't go crying and boohooing because you lost everything in the fire. Lot. The only thing you don't lose at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're a backslinger, any souls that, that came from you, the two girls. But you still don't get a crown for them. After all God's done for us. He may not give frogs, he may not give pestilence, but he has done wonderful things in our life. And those, and those Israelites brought some of those Egyptians with them. And those Egyptians caused more problem in their walk. For they provoked him to anger with, the high, with their high places. Oh, they went worshiping in high places. They had the tabernacle there amidst them. They had the Ark of the Covenant. They had the priests. And moved him, God, to jealousy with their graven images. They were making graven images. You know that, that serpent that, that God told uh, Moses to make? Later on, the Bible says that they called it Nashon. And they were worshiping it. Some people today call it Nissan and Ford and General Motors. You know, they wax it, clean it. More than they read their Bible. Shame, 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 shame. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred. That's, that's extreme hatred, Israel. You know there's images and there's high places in the church today? And God is wroth. Read what he says about the church in Revelation chapter 3, the last church. Read all seven churches. There's only one church that doesn't get a rebuke, I believe. Philadelphia. <clears throat> it's amazing when God heard this. I mean, they were talking. God heard their prayers and their chants and their singing. And their perverted Bibles. God hears it all. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why Jesus is. Oh, they, today, you know, God hears. He hears Santa Claus. He hears little boys that go to church and little girls that are in Sunday school. That he hears them praying before Santa Claus. And not just toys. For another parent that's missing in the house. For world peace. For diseases that are in the family. And God is angry and horrors that. So that he, God, forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh. That's where they had the tabernacle before it was in Jerusalem. The tent which he placed among men. That's that tent they built. All through Judges. Where, where do you read about that ark? I think King Saul only mentioned it two or three times, I think. Maybe not much, that much. And delivered his strength, God's strength, into captivity. Book of Judges. Chapter after chapter. And his glory into the enemy's hand. The book of Judges. Chapter after chapter after chapter. And some chapters are recorded two or three times he put him in captivity. Or two or three judges. You, know, you think you think the book of Judges was it 12, 24 chapters? You know, it's, it was a long time that these people did this to God. You know, the church age is a long time that we 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 do to God. He gave his people over unto the sword. And is wroth with his inheritance. Does God give hurricanes and storms and, and trouble to nations because of sin? Because of what they're doing? Yes, he does. 
But you got to remember, is it God doing it? Is it Satan doing it? Or is it nature herself doing it? But a God, but God allows it all. Job one and two. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given to marriage. You know the Bible records that there's going to be a shortage of Jewish men in the future. Five women are going to take a hold of one man and say, "You know, we, we will take care of our own food." In other words, we're women. We're going to work for a living. We'll get our own clothes. <coughs> but let us be called by your name. That's something that's not happening among women today. They get married and keep their father's name. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, Mrs. Woman, you don't belong to your father no more. You belong to your husband. You show me one Bible woman that ran back to her father. And I'll show you Jacob who lived with his father-in-law and he had much trouble. There's going to be a shortage of men. There's going to be a lot of women. You know what it is in the church house today? There's a lot of women and there's a shortage of men. Fire consumed. Listen, fire. Fire consumed our Christian brethren. On the faggots by one church because of the word because of the Bible and there were a lot of women left whittled to strive for their own selves to take care of themselves and that church wasn't happy enough some of them took the women and, and uh, murdered them their priests, the ones that God called, fell by the sword. You know, there's a priest in Jesus' time that turned him over to the Roman government. Don't think just because you're a priest or just think just because you're a pastor or you're some person in the church that, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. No, you're not. For all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. And those priests, and those Sadducees, and those Pharisees, and those scribes gathered the people together and had them crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what pastors are doing today in reverence and all that? They're gathering the people and turning them away from God. And their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awakened as one out of sleep, second advent, like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine. For Israel, God's sleeping. Unless they call upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior from their heart and profess with their mouth. Other than that, as a nation, God is sleeping for them. And he smote his enemies in the hinder parts, the rear end. He came up behind them. They're running. Don't you get that? In order to get hit in the hinder parts, they're running from Jesus. You know the most degradable wound to get and come back home, you know, to, to sit around the bar to, and have a beer with people and say, Hey, where'd you get shot in the war? Oh, boy, I got shot in the buttocks. You got shot where? I got shot in the hiney. Well, the only way you could get shot in a hiney is somebody that shot you from behind or you were going the wrong direction. Now, either somebody was a bad shot or hated you in your, camp, your company camp or you ran the wrong way. They are running from Jesus. Their buttocks are, be, are facing Jesus, running away. Get that. He put them to a perpetual reproach. You know what that means? They died and went to hell. And then they're going to come out of hell and be cast in the lake of fire. 
Moreover, he, God, refused the tabernacle of Joseph. Now, that was the name that we read the last night. Joseph's the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephraim and Manasseh. Ephraim is not even mentioned among the 144,000. Ephraim joined himself to idols. And it says he chose not the tribe of Ephraim. One of the minor prophets speaks about that. You know who you know you know who who people are saying that they're very free today? They're over in Utah. Those morons over there say they're Ephraim. You know what the Bible says? Ephraim's joined the idols. Let them alone. So when they come on your door, where the Bible says, say, hey, take your idols and get out of here, the Bible says. They got some kind of golden plates and big glasses. Boom. No one's ever seen them. I know about your church. They got their fancy dancy underwear. If you're Ephraim, God didn't choose you. And you can't be a Jehovah Witness because you're not one of the 144,000. <laughs> Woo! Woo, we have them. Yeah, that's me. I like that. But chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion. Which he loved. You know it was Judah that stepped up for, for Benjamin before Joseph. And said let my life go for, for Benjamin's life. You let Benjamin go and I'll stay here and be your servant. And God looked down from heaven and said I like that. That's exactly what my son's going to do. He couldn't pick Simeon. Simeon slept with his father. Wife. Reuben. Simeon and Levi went in and killed a whole bunch of men after they had a, a particular surgery. They were cruel. When Moses said, uh, when it was a sin in the camp, when Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? Guess who stood up with all their weapons? Levi, the priest. Now God said, I like that, but Judah was chosen. So if you don't have a Jude, Judah, Judean, you know, I guess it's Judah. Everybody else has a Judah. If you don't have a Judah Savior, if he's not from Judah, which is from Jacob, which is from Isaac, which is from Abraham, you don't have God's Savior, God's prophet. Mount Zion, that's where the tabernacle is. He built his sanctuary like high places, places, palaces, like the earth which he had established forever. Now God built those mountains, but he didn't build it for you to go worship other gods. You know, they were closer to the sun, they were closer to the moon, they were closer to the stars, they believed. You know what those mountains were? They were just another tower of Babel. That's all it was. Just God made, not man made. It's the same thing. Didn't they take mud and all that to make brick? What are mountains? Mud and rock. The mountains in Tower of Babel are the same thing. One was man made and one was God made. But it's not God's way. Religion is man made. God is Jesus Christ. He chose David, also his servant. The people wanted Saul. They wanted that high, tall, muscular, bound person. He didn't work. David was just a lonely shepherd. And took him from the sheepfolds. David was working. David was in the shepherd, shepherd's field. He was taking care of his sheep when God called him. When, when Samuel came to Jesse, all right, these are seven boys. Uh, these are not the ones. You got any others? Yeah, I got one more. But he, pff, that little runt, he's down there taking care of the sheep. What were the brothers doing home?
When David came in, he was he smelt like the field. He maybe even brought a sheep or two. Probably had his slingshot in his back pocket. Made a little dirt. And then you match that with Revel um, with John chapter ten of Jesus Christ being the shepherd. From following the ewes or ewes, ewes. David stayed with his animals. He told Saul, I fought a lion and I fought a bear and got the sheep back. You know what Saul did? He lost his asses. Did you get that? King David was a shepherd that took care of his sheep and defended them. Saul was a herder of asses and lost them. With young, and he followed the ewes, great, with, with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. You know, first David ruled over Judah, then he ruled over all Israel. So he, God, fed them according to the integrity of God's heart, his heart. And guided them by the skillfulness of his God's hands. God is the providential, not the United Nations, not the presidents and the world leaders. God is the head of Israel. And right now he's kind of asleep because they have rejected him. But this whole chapter speaks about history. Of the Jews and we're going to see more the Lord tarries we're going to see more in Psalms about the history it's repeated over and over and over and over and how did they change history today go to your modern any Baptist church and see what they're teaching in Sunday school are they teaching about David and Goliath no. They got some patchy the pirate teaching about Liar's Island or something like that. It's about a man, not Jesus. They got all uh, these veggie something. Now listen. If I got a piece of vegetable that's got eyes and starts talking, he's going down the garbage disposal. That's a possessed Carrot. Imagine your food talking to you. Why can't you have Jesus on the storm on, on the on the in the boat and during the storm? Why can't you have that in the Sunday school? Why can't you have the, the traditional old hymns about the blood, about the cross, than rather the junk you got today in the churches? Why do you have say this prayer rather than, you know, anybody come forward, we'll have somebody come up to you with an open Bible and show you how to be saved. And they won't let you say that prayer unless you know you're a sinner, you're going to hell, and Christ is the only answer. If you don't know that, they won't go further. Why is church history not being taught in the churches? Everyone will say, well, it's the first Baptist church in, in America. Oh, Providence, Rhode Island. Wrong. Give me at least three names that of Baptists, when they weren't Baptists then, but Baptists that were run out of, of, of you know, the, the pilgrims' territory because of the Word of God. Tell me the church name in, up north. And the church name down south that persecuted Christians over the word of God. Tell me the, tell me the history. Hmm? Don't you know? 
Do people know why some churches you stand up to read the word? Could they find that? What are churches teaching? You got to know your history. The Lord's Supper is you do this in remembrance of me till I come. Or something like that. When you take the Lord's Supper, it's not just, it's not you're eating Jesus and drinking Jesus. It's not that at all. And it's not, oh, this is something we do in church. All right, we're done. No, you're to confess your sins. You're to, you're to clean yourself up by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are to know that it was the body that was ripped open. That caused, that caused the, the, him to bleed. The gospel. How he died and was buried and rose from the grave. You ought to remember Isaiah 53 when you take that Lord's Supper. And the, and, and the, the bread and the, the, the juice. And then you are to do it by remembering that Jesus Christ is coming back. How many Baptist born again Christians throughout their day think Jesus is coming back and regarding? As we close.